What is the truth about sellers' property disclosure statements in Georgia? Every state is different, but a common question I receive as a broker here in Georgia, and I know you, Matt, as an attorney, is aren't sellers required to complete a disclosure statement in every real estate transaction, particularly from agents who are licensed in other states, and then they come to Georgia, perhaps? But the reality is, no, a seller is actually never, and we will get into we'll, dive into the reasons why, but sellers are never required to complete any specific disclosure form. Correct. Yeah. Like I said, typically you're going to see a seller's property disclosure with like a GAR contract, even with an RE contract. But legally speaking, it's not required. All the seller's required to do in Georgia is disclose latent defects of which they're aware that the buyer couldn't discover through a reasonable inspection. So a good example is a septic tank issue foundation issue. That's all the sellers legally required to disclose in, in Georgia. So it's customary. And I do agree with that. It, it is customary, but it's not required. Now, um, if there are any hidden defects that a buyer could not reasonably discover on their own through an inspection of the property, it that would put a requirement on the seller and also the agent, if the agent knows about it, Correct. to disclose it. And in that case... I absolutely agree. The best place to do that is in a seller's property disclosure statement so that it's in writing and attached to the contract. But if the seller does not know of any latent or hidden defects, the agent doesn't know of any latent or hidden defects, maybe it's an investment property, then there would typically not be a disclosure statement and there definitely would not be a requirement for there to actually be one. Correct. Now, one thing that is uh, here in the state of Georgia, we have a wonderful forms committee with the Georgia Association of Realtors, and they update the GAR contract forms every year, which is why we recommend agents use those forms. And there is a long seller's disclosure statement form, and there's also a very short condensed seller's disclosure statement form. So just you agents out there, sellers out there who have not lived in a property, it investment property, that short disclosure form, if you're going to fill one out, would definitely be one to take a look at. Correct. Yeah, because the short disclosure form, all it requires is for you to disclose those latent defects, for you to fulfill your legal obligations in Georgia. And like you said, the, the seller's property disclosure is a lot longer because not only are you disclosing current problems with the property, you're supposed to disclose historical problems as well. So it requires a lot more information than the short form, which also, too, has that fixtures checklist, which yes. is great. So you can go through all the items that are going to stay with the property, items that are going to go, so you don't run into any issues on the back end. Yes, that's a good point because... Seth Weissman, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be all or all or nothing, right? The the fixtures checklist is super super helpful, um, and so that is one of the key things about the condensed disclosure statement form. If a seller is going to complete a seller's property disclosure statement form, because a lot of sellers do, it's important that it be filled out to the best knowledge and belief of the seller, of course, mm -hmm. and that it be updated. So. If anything changes, if maybe your knowledge of the property changes because you got a home inspection report back, or maybe some storms blew through that weekend and, and things changed, the seller's property disclosure statement needs to be updated. Correct. And another example would be, let's say you remember a past repair that you didn't put initially on the seller's property disclosure. If you remember that during the course of the transaction, then you are obligated under the terms of the exhibit to go back and amend it and make sure you get a copy to the buyer. Absolutely. And I caution agents too when they receive a lot of questions or just questions about the property to, and there is a disclosure statement to take a look at that. Maybe it is the data input sheet whenever the listing was input into the MLS, mm -hmm. if that was completed and signed. Let's take a look and see what the seller said so that it's coming from the seller and not from the agent as well, just as a, a piece of advice. Um, another piece of advice I did want to share with everyone, Matt, is if there are any fixtures, because I know we mentioned the fixtures checklist, that aren't going to stay with the property. I know a chandelier is the classic example that's mentioned in your pre-licensed course, those of you who are agents, but go ahead and remove them from the property. I mean, you can make it super clear or you can make it as clear uh, as you can in the remarks on the listing and in the contract, but best advice I can give you guys is to remove the items. Correct. And keep in mind, too, the seller's property disclosure says that if you 
or removing that item, not only does it need to be removed before possession, but if it's not removed within 30 days of closing and the buyer has to do it, you have to pay for the costs associated with the buyer removing that item. So you definitely want to make sure, I agree with you there, get it out as early as possible, but definitely make sure you get it done before closing. Yes. And a couple of other things that I wanted to mention that I think are popular here in Georgia is the Community Association Disclosure. And again, it's, there is technically no requirement on a seller to complete a Community Association Disclosure form. But if it is going to be filled out, it needs to be accurate. Correct. And with the CAD, the reason why I'm highlighting this one is if if the price that you mentioned for the HOA is more than what's stated, the seller actually has to pay the difference. That's right. I believe. Correct. So a lot of sellers will just, in an effort to exercise an overabundance of caution, they will put, they'll bump that number up a little bit. Absolutely. Because if you state it's $500 and it turns out it's $1,500, guess who's paying the extra grand? Yeah, and you have a happy seller. <laughs> a very happy, very happy seller. No one likes those kind of surprises, right? No. So, property sight unseen. And again, out-of-state buyers, um, if, if you haven't seen the property, maybe you aren't out-of-state, maybe you're in-state and you're making multiple offers on properties, you really need to understand that sellers don't have to disclose things that you could have found out with a home inspection. And with the changes in the market that we have been seeing, negotiating is back and buyers are are getting that due diligence period again. But when the market was wild and buyers were making so many offers with sight unseen and no due diligence period, um, that was just something that could really, could really come into play. Oh. And um, again, be an unwelcome surprise. Absolutely. For sure. We had a couple, I remember getting calls about that because, you know, like you said, the market was so crazy. There was no due diligence period, a lot of out state buyers. And I always told agents, even now with the due diligence period, if it's only three or four days, because I think, you know, even the market's shifting and still we're not back to seven and 10 days. At least I'm not seeing that. I would put something in writing to this out of state seller explaining one, that it's a buyer beware state, and two, that the due diligence period they have may not be long enough for them to get to the property, see if they like it, see if there are any issues that need to be you know, negotiated, you know, any repairs, et cetera. Always best to have something in writing. Yes. And if you are a solid source agent in our forms packages in FMLS, we do have a disclosure to buyers when making competitive offers. And that is a very helpful form. Um, our attorneys on staff, Matt, you guys helped us with that. But it goes over an array of of things that help to reduce your overall liability. And it does talk about sight unseen. And I think that the last point that that I have that uh, I think is important for everyone to understand is as a real estate agent in Georgia, we do want to be, we do have to answer questions honestly. And so if someone asks us a question, um, we have a duty to, uh, for example, um, if there was a death in the property. In general, that's a disclosure question that I, I will receive uh, routinely throughout throughout the year. And in general, no, we are not required to disclose that someone passed away in the property. But if a buyer asks us and we know, then we would need to answer honestly. That doesn't mean we have to go into an array of detail about it, but we would have to answer that question honestly. Correct. Yeah, you're right there. there. George has a specific law that addresses deaths in the fa or yeah, deaths at the property, and it says up front you don't have to disclose that information. But Beretta and Grec rules do require agents to answer questions honestly. So if you are asked about it, if you don't have to disclose up front. You do have to be honest with the buyer. Yes, and if you are a licensee, you hold a Georgia real estate license, even if it is inactive. If you are buying and selling property, you do need to make sure that is disclosed. In the contract, if you're advertising outside of a broker, it needs to be disclosed on there as well. I appreciate your your professional um, advice and Absolutely. opinions. Uh, these are common questions that we receive about disclosures, and um, we hope that you found this information helpful. And, uh, you know, not true that you have to fill out any specific disclosure form in Georgia, but if something does legally need to be disclosed, and writing is definitely the way you want to go. 
And um, if you do have any questions and you are solid source, just know your broker team, your attorneys are here, and we always love hearing from you.